fiction books. I don't have a favorite. I can read from, or fiction books I can read from Louis Lamar to Dean Koontz or yeah. you know, whatever. Is it hard for you to, like at the end of a day, are you pretty much like everybody on the outside? At the end of your day, you're tired and you're just really not up to reading much or, you know, do you watch TV or you, I know occasionally you write a letter every now and then. Letters are not very good for me. <laughs> you like, one for me? In the barracks, in the barracks, everybody's like running around, hollering and stuff, always asking me stuff and all this. It's real smoky in there and all this, you know, this is not really hard to concentrate. Mm -hmm. That's where you have to do it. You have to, write, you have to sit there and write your letter? Yeah. My student, when I'm like sitting there, we don't have a desk in it. Well, we have a desk, a table, and chairs, but they're always playing dominoes on it. They're like sitting on my rack off, over it makes my back hurt, back of my neck and stuff. Your penmanship's good, considering you're having to write like that. Your letters are a lot easier to read than some of them I've got. It's better not from you. Better from than people. mine. Yeah. <laughs> So what's a regular day like for you? What is your job? What time do you get up? What time do you go to bed? All that stuff. Right now I'm on host squad. Why that? are you on host squad? Disciplinary. What happened? Uh, can you talk about it? Yeah, I guess I can talk about it. See, I've been working in the kitchen. Like when I first got here, when you first get here, you're class two. They have four classes: class one, class two, class three, and class four. Class four is like the bottom. Class four is the top. And yeah, you're class two. You're class two for 60 days. If you don't get in trouble with disciplinary, nothing like that. When I first got here, you know, I stayed on post squad for 60 days. I get in trouble. Got my class one. I wanted a clerk's job. You know, something to do with typing on the computer and doing it to work, whatever, you know. But Ms. McWilliams, she was the assistant warden in and Campbell, he was the head warden. Ms. McWilliams told me that I had to get my GED to have a clerk's job and come back in 30 days. So I went and got my GED and came back in 30 days. By then, they uh, done got stuck in the kitchen. Kitchen, man. You can't get out of the kitchen. <laughs> and that's pretty bad. I mean, I would think being around food. And well, it's and good at first, but, you know, I eat everything I could at first, but then you're like working around all that food, you don't have an appetite for it. Mm -hmm. You wind up eating less than what you would usually do. Mm -hmm. How is the food? Is it worth eating? <laughs> sometimes it's alright, sometimes. <laughs> they got this stuff called Jack Mac. Jack Mac patties and all that. <laughs> that ain't no good. <laughs> <laughs> They'll tell you that. <laughs> so your daily, I, I worked in there for, I had my class one in there for a good year and a half, two years, a year and a half, let's say. And like, that's a hard job to keep your class in because like, people constantly get flipped out of there. You know, get fired and stuff, for like selling sets and stuff, sets of food out. Bring the stealing food out and stuff. So, anyway, I ended up you working there seven days a week, weekends, holidays, and when I was in there, I had worked up to where I was baker, baker job, or like I baked bread and baked desserts and stuff. That's a real hard job. It's real hot, and messy and stuff. And I was working there seven days a week, and sometimes ten hours a day, ten twelve hours a day. It just got nerve wracking. Plus to it, you know, it was wanting me to be a you know, laundry clerk. Sergeant Armstrong had a position in the laundry clerk. He was calling Miss Butcher all the time. She went there and put me up for a job change. So I was, so I quit. They put me on a whole squad. What is whole squad? Where you go out in these fields over here and once you get used to it, it ain't really all that bad, but first it's hard and you just use a hoe and chop the grass up or like you go out there and potato field, the green field, pick potatoes, greens, all kinds of stuff. You like that better? Or worse than the bakery. You get a whole lot of free days off, and it's, it's really less work. <laughs> yeah. Because you only work a few hours in the morning, a few hours in the afternoon, and nine of them straight. Like, if there's a rainy day or something, or if it's real cold, you get the day off, get weekends off automatic. You know, like today we had a day off today. I guess because I'm doing the skate last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And on day four, yesterday we worked, and day four yesterday we didn't work. And plus, you don't get to wear the cool chef's hat. <laughs> we didn't have to wear one, really. No? You <laughs> notice most chefs are kind of fat, though. They put on a little bit of weight, and apparently he didn't. <laughs> they didn't I can't gain no weight. I'm like my mom. She's like real small. Damien's also really thin. Yeah. I don't know. I seen a picture on him on court TV the other day. I know he used to be bigger than me. I didn't know. 
he had lost some weight. He's, he's pretty frail these days. He's pretty pretty thin. That's why we're asking the, the questions about the food and everything, because he's not a big fan of the Well, they got commissary. The department of corrections food. <laughs> well, they got commissary, you know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, look at my life lots right now. I got a bunch of soups and chips and cheese up and Connie sauce in mine. And I like <laughs> What's your cell? Your, your, their cell? You have your own cell? No, or? it's a barracks. Yeah. Like 57, 58 people in there at the most. A little less because people come in and out and stuff. What's yeah. that like? No privacy. <laughs> you get a rack. It's got a... On the end where I'm at, the bo locker boxes are built on the rack. And the other end, the rest of the... One through six locker boxes are built on the rack. And seven barracks to 22 barracks. You get a separate locker box from your rack. So they just, um, are they just like bunk beds in a box sitting no, out in the open? Is this a bed? It ain't bunk. That's a small bed. This is like a hospital kind of thing? Kind of like a hospital room. Right? Except not as comfortable. Right. right. <laughs> you don't get to buzz for the nurse. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> it's always pretty noisy. It's kind of hard to get some yeah. peace and quiet. Do you get along with people here? Yeah, what? I can get along with them. They can get along with me, I can get along with them. Would you say you had friends here? Yeah, I got I got these friends, yeah. What was it like when you first came in? Everybody thought, no, a child killer and all oh, this. I mean, oh, dude. Was everybody out to get you pretty much for that? Yeah. Because of the, it was almost like being back in West. But really though, so. nothing really happened to me. First year or so I was here. I didn't really get no fights or nothing. People didn't really mess with me. You know, they'd argue with me, try to get me to box, and I'd say, no. I'd be ready to fight, but they didn't ever fight. And the only time I really got to a fight was here last, this last year. Because I, mean, I got jumped one time, got my collarbone broke. That's what I heard. Yeah. Probably still see the bones sticking up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is that the extent of it, pretty much? Or didn't you have concussions also or something? Or? Yeah, because it knocked me out. My head was like swollen up. And there for like a week afterwards, certain sounds were like made my eyes blur. Made my eyes cross. That's really weird. They didn't ever diagnose it anymore. What can you tell us about the uh, spoon torture of the heathen Chinese? The what? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe that's another one of Damien's stories. <laughs> so y'all used to hold, uh, used to hold Matt down, give him the spoon torture of the heathen Chinese, tap it on his chest with a spoon. Oh yeah. <laughs> we like play wrestling and stuff all the time. Me, Damien, Matt, my brother, like popping pop with a spoon and like. When we was like, or like you know, me and David were like playing Super Nintendo or something, Matt would like come up and unplug one of our controllers and where one of us, we'd be trying to get our controller and another one of us would be whooping <laughs> the other one on the game and stuff. He deserved it. Can you tell us about the uh, incident where uh, you have sent Matt into, into the church to get Kool-Aid and cookies? Did that ring a bell at all? Oh, there was like, at church one time, they was like having a um, thing all day. Like to get together, you know, like where they have, like, let's have cookies and cakes and stuff. We told them, go and get us some cookies and Kool Aid and all that. <laughs> he told us about the, what, the Kroger uh, basket, shopping basket full of stuff. Is it Kroger? Yeah, yeah man. Just to go right out of it. Kroger pushing it back. I can't believe that. My brother walked into Kroger, filled a basket full of cakes and chips and whatever, and just pushed it right out. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell that. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say. I mean, we'll make sure that's edited. Keep that one kind of low. You think he had just a, a look, like a certain look that he'd get away with stuff like that? I don't know. I think the lady opened the door for him, too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Nice little child. Do um, you ever have any, uh, and I, I ask this, if you don't want to answer it, that's no problem, but a lot of people, along with the, sa the satanic aspect of this whole thing, a lot of people are thinking, you know, that, oh, there must have been drug usage and, you know, it had to be you ever use drugs at all? You know, when you're a teenager, it's like... Mm -hmm. I drink sometimes at parties and stuff, but I never bought it because I didn't like, have no money. Mm -hmm. I remember one time uh, we went to this girl's apartment. She was having some kind of party or something. You know, I was over there and ended up drinking some Evan Williams or some kind of whiskey, and I was like drunk. I was like bad drunk, tore down. I was like on the floor and I had to throw up. And the girl was like, no, don't throw up on my carpet. No. And I seen something, it was a shoe. I oh. threw up in the shoe and it was dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it was mad too, because he like got them for Christmas. And it, was like, it was brand new at the time, some brand new black top Reeboks. 
<laughs> so you put them on? I don't know. I was I left because my mom came get me. I was like supposed to be home at twelve, and it was like three. She came and got me like. I sold up real fast. I was like, like I wasn't drunk or nothing. I got in the car. <laughs> then she started driving. She went around a corner. And I had to roll the window down. I was like, you been drinking? I'm like, yeah. Just shut up. Don't yell at me. <laughs> she was here ground for a month. I'm like, all right, okay. Just don't talk to me no more. Oh, don't yell. I got a headache. <laughs> don't scream. No turns. Don't take any more turns. That's so bad. Um, let me ask you. Have you ever actually been to the Robin Hood Hills? Woods. Mm -hmm. You had never been in the woods at I all. I've heard of. That was the first time. Because Damien also mentioned that. It was just something ironic. For such a small town, even as a kid, if y'all had been snake hunting and all that kind of stuff, well, I'd never been in there. I was like way, like here was my trailer part. I was like way over there towards Memphis. I think that's what he told us. We had he y'all were actually closer what to Marion, I think. Yeah, something like that, farther out. We like lived right between Marion and West Memphis. We went to Marion schools and stuff. You see, in the movie, it makes it seem like all this stuff about Damien and Dominique on the service road makes it seem like it was just a casual walk over to the woods. None of us knew how to drive. Yeah. I, I remember I was going, that summer I was going to try to learn how to drive, get a driver's license and a job, buy me a car. But I wanted a job. Had you heard about any kind of alleged teen or satanic or cult activity in those woods? Like uh, all this crap about the uh, orgies and all this kind of stuff. Think of her. Uh, that you never really heard of that rumors rumors around came town. out until after the murders. That's when all those rumors came out. That's the first time. So, so there weren't a lot of people gathering back there. Uh -huh. Teenagers having parties or anything like that. I, I don't know. Went around there. Did you attend a church at all? Ever? I used to. When I was little. I used to go to Sunday school and stuff all the time. But I just kind of grew out of like Sunday mornings. I really didn't want to get up to church because mm -hmm. Monday was school day. Did most people in that community were they pretty? devout church goers. Just the old people and the real young kids. Did you ever sense that there was all this satanic panic or fear of, or anything or prior to this stuff coming up? Mm -hmm. So it sort of maybe seemed like it was sort of out of character for the community to jump it on is, the Satan. It just blew up after all that like stuff that. happened. Was it pretty, was it pretty 